Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements, in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Amen. First Timothy, the fourth chapter. Open your Bible with me. Real briefly, we'll, we will, as you're finding those openings, we'll reference again these, these first few verses talking about demonic doctrines and seducing spirits and hypocritical lies that communicate them. Seducing spirits, doctrines of demons, demonically inspired doctrines, and hypocritical liars that communicate those. And two of those hypocritical lies that the Bible identifies are forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from certain foods. And again, just want to be crystal clear, if you choose not to eat a particular food, uh, that's totally up to you. Uh, I do a little thing called three tig four. It's three T-I-G four. And, and, and I, I put it out uh, if you want to be on it and, and, and let it help you because most of the people that receive it, it just inspires them to gratitude, to be grateful. I had a pastor that I talked to on the phone last week uh, and uh, he, he said, now before we leave, we talked about a different issue and he told me, he said, before we leave, I just want you to know that three TIG four has helped me. I said, I didn't even know you even get it. I didn't know you received it. My staff takes care of who, who gets it. And if people say they don't want it, we take them off the list. It's, but uh, I, I, I attended a resilience training uh, that was uh, two years ago, I believe it was, was put on by a retired uh, member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice. And, and he just did a tremendous two-day conference on, on resiliency. And, and part of what he did, he said, I've got seven people. I've got seven people, and every day I just write something I'm grateful for, and all seven of them respond. And so we all have an opportunity to, to talk about something we're thankful for, and it just, it just reframes your focus in a world that's so ungrateful, unappreciative, uh, everything's going wrong, points out all of the horrible things about our nation, about our leaders, about the climate, uh, about the... Uh, 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 financial uh, condition of the world uh, and, and all of a sudden you reframe life into here's one, something I'm thankful for. And so I, 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 I thought, well, I'm going to send it to everybody that I know. Some people have said they don't appreciate it, they don't want it. Uh, one person even was honest enough to say, I'm miserable and I like it. Uh, and, and so <laughs> I thought, okay, okay. <clears throat> I believe that. I, 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 I completely believe there are people like that. So we don't send it to him anymore. Uh, but, but this pastor said uh, what it's inspired me to do is every night before I go to bed, every single night before I go to bed, I go up to my office and I type out an email to my wife and I tell her something I'm grateful for about her. It might have been something that day or just something about her, but said it has changed our lives and I needed to tell you thank you. So uh, yesterday, one of the things I was grateful for was my breakfast. Now, before I say this, um, have, have you seen that there's a billboard around La Crosse? It's for a potato company and the potato is sitting on a couch and it says, it's okay, we don't judge. So I just want to tell you that it's okay not to judge before I tell you. I said, uh, one thing I'm grateful for is what I had for breakfast, dried pineapple and a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised how, how, how the, the tastes go. And that dried pineapple, I even put in there, I buy it at Menards. You, imagine, you can't find it at grocery stores, but you can buy dried pineapple right around, right around the... the, the the cash registers at Menard, so I just get that. And boy, you take a bite of Kit Kat bar and a piece of that. And, and last year, one time, I said uh, a Kit Kat bar and blueberries. And, and the taste, boy, I got more responses to that. You were right. That is so good. I mean, this is, 
<laughs> from all over the place, different states, different countries even. And so I put that in there yesterday. Man, my first response this morning was Bishop Augustine <laughs> from Florida. He's down there for three more weeks. And he says, I love what he said about that. I love his breakfast. I love dried pineapple and a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Listen, you may not ever want to try it. I'm not telling you to. I'm not even saying you should. And I'm certainly not going to tell you you shouldn't. You know what Paula had for breakfast this morning? I was down in Dubuque yesterday helping Marty Hansel, Pastor Hansel, who passed away in February, and his wife, and we're still helping her with, with different things, and, and went down yesterday and, and uh, uh, picked up a pickup truck that Steve owns, and we're trying to get that sold for her. Uh, and she made absolutely certain that we did not leave her house without this plate covered with pecan cinnamon rolls. Like cinnamon rolls sitting on a bed of pecans with frosting all over the top. Now, I wouldn't know how they were. I didn't have one today. My loss, she said. And here she, <laughs> she told me they were wonderful. Now, you may be sitting here saying, I would never let anything like that touch my lips. Well, if you're the least little bit prideful about that you don't eat stuff like that, then, then, then you need to repent. That's just all there is to it. The Bible says judging someone else because of what they eat is just as bad as judging someone else for what they do not eat, and both of them are sin. And if you feel like you're superior because you don't eat a certain thing, and, and somebody else feels like they're superior because they do eat a certain thing, you both need to repent. There's no spirituality on what you eat and don't eat. No, he says right there in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not what you eat and what you drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So here, he, it, it, it's, this is a spiritual thing. You're going to be more spiritual if you don't eat a certain thing. Now, we've got, we've got some friends that we've made over the, the past couple of years. Their son was killed in a, in a terrible auto accident, and he was a state patrol trooper. And uh, every now and again, we'll see him, make an make a, uh, effort to get together with them, to check up on them, see how they're doing. Uh, they, they, they both, uh, since we got to meet him, turned their lives to Christ. He got saved. She got, renewed her relationship. They're, 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 they're loving the Lord, reading the Bible together. Uh, and uh, what, what, a, what a great joy, Sam and Cindy. Uh, Stan and Cindy uh, are to us, but you know, last time we got together with them, and they said, "Well, we 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 try to, we just try to, you know, one day a week uh, eat eat just fish, and no meat. Um, there's no problem with that." But he looked at me and said, "But if there's no fish available, I'm going to get a butter burger." <laughs> <laughs> See? See, it's not a spiritual thing; it's just a health thing. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But as soon as you start to feel like you're more spiritual or less spiritual because of either abstaining from certain foods or abstaining from holy matrimony, the Bible's really clear right here, isn't it? I don't know why there'd be any confusion about it at all. The Bible says that's a hypocritical lie, demonically inspired doctrine. No two ways about that one, is there? Okay. And then... He says, uh, those things have been created by God to be received with thanksgiving. With what? Thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Them that believe and know the truth. And every creature of God is good. Nothing to be refused if it's received with what? Thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Yeah. Not on thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. <laughs> For it's sanctified by a word of God that's offered in prayer. We covered all of that, taught all of that. We've looked at verse 6. It says, put the brethren in remembrance of these things and you'll be a good minister. Good ministers put people in remembrance of things that they already know. And, and that just drives it deeper and grounds it, grounds it further. And then it makes this statement. I had this conversation with Tony Cook last week. And, and he looked at that, and I looked at it, and we looked together, and he said, I've never seen that. I've never noticed that, but that's exactly right. That is what the Bible says. It says you're nourished up in the words of faith 
and of good doctrine. It doesn't say faith in good doctrine, it, it, and even if it would, uh, it, it still delineates that there's a difference between the two, identifies that there's a difference between the two. Everything that you read in God's Word does not produce faith. Some of it is just good doctrine. See, if I, if I, if I stand up and just give you a whole message on let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, that's not going to produce faith to receive a promise, but it's good doctrine. If I come over to this side and have all the husbands stand to their feet and say, love your wife as Christ loves the church, that's a commandment. That's a demand of our God upon your life. That doesn't produce faith for you to receive a promise. Now, every verse in the Bible is infused so that faith is produced as you hear it. That's clear in the Bible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Some people think you have to hear a verse on a certain subject or faith isn't produced for that. That doesn't come from the Bible. That's human reasoning. The whole Bible produces faith when it's heard, according to Romans chapter 10, delivered under the anointing of the preacher. Something, something we, we might call, if we were worldly, mystical and magical about that. We, we, we don't. It's just spiritual. That's the way our God has designed the system to work, and, and so that it does. But everything in the Bible, see, we could turn back to, to uh, let's see how our memory is. We could turn back to Proverbs chapter 6 and identify the six sins that God hates. See, seven are an abomination to him. We could just identify them. What was the first one? Pride. What was the second one? A lying tongue. What was the third one? Murder. Murder. Shedding is in blood. What was the fourth one? Heart that's swift to run to mischief. What's the, what's the fifth one? Now one person turning back in their Bible to look. See? All right, then what's the sixth one? A lying tongue. What's the seventh one? Sowing discord amongst the brethren. Okay? All right, sister, what's number five? You're back there. We got that one. Feet that are swift running to mischief. So those are the seven. Now, that doesn't produce faith in your life to receive a particular promise, but it does produce faith, and it's good doctrine. So if it's specific to a promise, if it's specific to one of God's provisions, say, for instance, salvation unto eternal life. When you hear the gospel message that Jesus came from heaven, lived a perfect life, went to the cross, and put his life there instead of yours, let God's judgment pour out upon him instead of you. And if you will, by faith, accept what he did, and he then, then as your Savior, you'll be born again. And you'll become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And your name etched in heaven for all of eternity. And you'll be a child of God. And old things will pass away and everything will become new. And you'll be an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ from that day forward. Now, I got a good testimony this morning of someone who accepted Christ. And that person's testimony was upon questioning, well, what does that mean to you? And they said that I'm going to heaven. That's only one, one portion and part of what it means to get saved. Because to be a child of God has promise in the life that now is and in the life that is to come. All right, so let's look at that verse. Verse 7, it says, Refuse profane old wives' tables. Exercise yourself rather to godliness, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable. Say it. Godliness is profitable unto how many things? All things, All things having promise of the life that, that now is and the life that is to come. And so here's just a great verse that talks about the fact that being a Christian, being a believer, uh, we might say uh, being a, uh, being a uh, church attending, radical, arm waving, hand lifting, yeah. foot stomping, yeah. devil chasing, Bible reading, Word doing, Holy Ghost praying, yeah. witnessing, tithing, giving, loving the brethren, Christian, 
That's profitable in the life that now is. I, I grew up in church, and I don't remember hardly much of anything that was identified as godliness is profitable in the life that now is. I don't know if any of you remember a quote by a, a man named T.L. Linscott. And it was all from his book, The Path of Life. And I shared that quote in several services a number of years ago. Next thing I knew, I got three copies of his book that people went back to old, old, old bookstores and and gave me. But there's one particular portion. I I was introduced to uh, Mr. Linscott in in 1985. Uh, He was back in the the 1800s. And his book, The The Path of Wealth, and he has one section in it on the tithe. And, and he states in that particular book, most of God's present day, present tense promises are put off to the sweet by and by, by modern day religion. And he's exactly right. And that mentality that I need to go forward, I need to accept Jesus, I need to get saved, and then I'll go to heaven when I die in the sweet by and by. And, 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 and I thought I got born again when I was nine years old at the Cedarville Evangelical Congregational Church. And from the time I was nine to the time I'm right now 62, heaven looks pretty good. It's looking better all the time. But I don't need anything in the sweet by and by. In the last 52 years, I've needed something in the rotten here and now. <laughs> And, and, and I found out that God's blessings of empowerment and supernatural strength and leadership and guidance and supernatural protection and healing for this physical body that, that, that I'm encased in and supernatural provision in the financial realm and the favor of God that surrounds me like a shield and, and joy unspeakable and full of glory and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding and something that I thought, I, I thought you had to do, be, be, be all wrong and do something bad to get wealth. Until I read my Bible one day without spiritual colored glasses on, and it, said, it says, the, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. The blessing of the Lord. And I read in my Bible that it said his will was that I prosper and be in health. And I read in my Bible in the Psalms that it said he rejoices in the prosperity of his servants. I also read in that same Bible that prosperity will destroy a fool. So I decided not to be a fool. Don't want to be destroyed. The love of money is the root of all evil. So I've decided not to love it. I thought, I'll just use it. Tell it what it's going to do for me. Use it to promote the kingdom of God and advance the cause of Christ and, and, and support missions and dig wells and feed the hungry and, and, and build churches. Not just this one. Um, no, no, the Bible here in this one particular verse, it's such a great verse, differentiates between what, will, what is to come, the life which is to come, and the life which now is. And there are certain things that are only beneficial to the life which now is. And they shouldn't be your focus, and they shouldn't be what you put all your energy towards. It says in 1 Corinthians that the fashion of this world will all perish and pass away. And so all the things that we throw ourselves into and make our focus that are only going to exist right here in this lifetime, uh, we've got our priorities out of, out of place. And, and our focus ought to be on things that are eternal and, and, and the life which now is. And that's a short list. But as Jesus said earlier in, in Matthew 23, 23, uh, he said, you have omitted the, the more important matters. You've done what was right, but you've omitted the more important matters. There are things that you have to do in this lifetime that have no eternal value. You just have to do them. You just have to mow your grass. You know, you, you, you just have to wash your face. Yeah, you just have to launder your socks. And there's really no internal, eternal value in that. Launder somebody else's socks whose washer broken, there might be. But, but uh, th- there are things that, that uh, Paula, you vacuumed our whole house this afternoon. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's any eternal value in that. It just made our house look really nice. There are those things, and they shouldn't be neglected. I said they should not be neglected. 
I mean, you just, if, if we leave church here tonight and, you know, we're one of the last ones out and we shut the lights off and turn everything, lock the doors and drive up and we get going up through La Crosse and we see this car over to the side of the street and it's got its flashers on like this. And we go by and Paula says, well, <laughs> I, th I, th I think that was, I think that was the Hackman family. I saw Carl out there looking at his car like this, shaking his head. And, and I said, well, we'll go around the block and go back and see what's the matter. Maybe his car's broke down. We pull up behind him and say, hey, Carl, is your car broke down? No, no. I, I, I just don't understand this, Pastor, because I put all my focus on spiritual things and been thinking about the life which is to come, and my car ran out of gas. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't get it. Listen, you got to pull the thing into the gas station when, 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 you know, when, the, when the little needle gets down. There's an E on your gas gauge, Carl. That means empty. Well, I thought if I just gave my full undivided attention to God and his word and his people and, and his purpose and his cause and his mission, that he'd take care of everything because that's what my Bible says. My Bible says if I'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will just be added to me. Well, you've got to pull in the gas station, put the mountains, and then it'll be added. <laughs> and the system is, you've got to pay for it. Put that little credit card in the slot, pull it back out. Not too early either. It'll yell at you, the machine. Now, there are things that you have to do as you course through this lifetime. Have to. Have to, have to, and and they're they're profitable. They keep your car running, they keep your body running, they keep your relationship running. But he says exercising for those things only profits in this lifetime. Godliness, that prayer in the spirit, this attending church on a Wednesday night, this reading your Bible, this meditating God's word, this bringing your honor to Him and placing it before Him, this getting on your knees every morning and subjecting your life to Him, this worshiping the great Almighty everlasting, ever-living God and submitting your life to Him, that's going to have promise in this whole lifetime. Don't ever think it isn't. And don't ever believe anybody in any teaching that says, well, all the promises of God, they're just going to be waiting for us in glory and they're going to be there for us in eternity. They are. They are. But right here, right now, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, is here. He's here to confirm the Word of God and to bring to pass every single promise God has made. He didn't say, all the promises of God are for off in yonder future, on the other side of the clouds, after you've taken that far long journey, then they'll be yours. He didn't say that. He said, all the promises of God are yes and amen. That's just it. That's it. I grew, I grew up amongst a lot of people who love the Lord, and to the extent of what they knew, I said, to the extent of what they knew, no one can go beyond what they know. The Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yeah. And, and uh, I wasn't dying. I just felt like I was a lot of nights when I'd wake up because I had two serious car accidents in less than three months when I was 20 years old and I was rear-ended both times and the physical therapists and the surgeons and the best medical people in, 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 our, in our whole sphere, anybody we could contact, said, there's no hope for you, you're gonna live in that pain. They gave me opioids, they gave me pain medication that I take morning, noon, and night and they gave me a home traction kit. I'd sit right there against the, the, the kitchen door and there'd be 20 pounds of weight on the back side of the door and a pulley system pulling up on my neck and on my spine trying to give me some kind of relief and, and a lot of other symptoms. I don't need to go into all of it. And, and I still love the Lord. I didn't blame him for it. I didn't know why he let it happen. I didn't know why it was his will that that, 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 that happened to me. But nobody told me. I mean, but nobody told me. I knew God could heal. I think. I wasn't quite Sure. And then one day I come across in my Bible, 1 Peter 2.24. One day I got into a, into a word of faith, Bible study. One day I went to a service and saw people lay hands on the sick. I'd never seen that in my life. I mean, I was in church from kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, my senior in high school. I graduated from high school. I was two or three years out of high school. I'd never seen anybody get hands laid on them, ever. 
I didn't know what anointing with oil was. We couldn't have anointed anybody with oil in any of those churches to save our eternal soul. We didn't have any oil. I found out there were verses in the Bible like, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. I hate to think what would happen if I'd have called for the elders of the church. They'd have looked at it and said, well, that's not for us today. That's what they'd have told me because that's what they believed. Because that's what they had preached to them. It's not for us today. Or, well, that was just for the early church. We didn't anoint anybody. I never saw one person anointed with oil in all those years. And then people, people in, 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 in word of faith churches, independent churches, full gospel churches, Pentecostal churches, charismatic churches that believes in the gifts of the Spirit, that believe in the, in the supernatural power of God being poured out right here today, that lay hands on the sick and that cast out devils and that anoint people with oil and, and believe in raising the dead, bless God. And then people leave those churches and go back in those kind of churches that I used to attend. I, I, can't, I can't even... I can't even I can't even imagine that, but, 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 but yeah, yeah, because my friends go there. Or because you're too fanatical in that church and my boyfriend don't want to go there. How about, how about this one? Get a new one. <laughs> or, or you can be just, <laughs> or you can just be totally focused in the life that now is. But there is a life which is to come. And godliness is profitable in both, according to this verse right here in 1 Timothy chapter 4. No, no, no. Well-meaning people, I'm not, I'm not mad at those people. I'm not criticizing them, judging them. I'm just telling you the way it was. I had to find out on my own that there is a Jesus that has never changed, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I read that verse in Hebrews because I started reading my Bible. It's dangerous to ignorance when you start reading your Bible. When Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same. Not almost the same, the same. So I'd go back and I'd read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I didn't find Jesus making anybody sick. I found him healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And then I'd go back and I'd look at it again. It says right here that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you have a Bible? Look at Hebrews 13, 8 and see if that's what your Bible says. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Now, the other verses that I've been dealing with, if you're taking notes or want to know, is James 5, 14. It's 1 Peter 5, excuse me, 1 Peter 2 and verse 24. Acts 10, 38, Jesus went about doing good. And it wasn't until I started believing what the Bible says and, and, and saying, Lord, you did it then. Your word says that you'll do it now. Your word says you've never changed. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And last Sunday, I was out at my younger brother's house. He asked me to come out in back of his house to look at something. I walked out. You know what I saw? That old clothesline is still there. Because one day, nine months after I took my stand of faith uh, and said, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. If this Bible is true, then, then all of these symptoms are going to have to dissipate and you're going you're to manifest healing in this body. I believe your word is true and I'm going to take a stand today to see it. I don't care if it takes the whole rest of my life. Amen. And nine months later, I was walking across my folks' backyard. They live right next door to the house my younger brother still lives in. And I walked over, and I bent down like this, and I walked over, and I went, ah! And I did. I backed in. I went over. I said, I'm going to try that again. And I didn't have any pain. Didn't have any pain whatsoever. And I found out the God of eternities never changes. Malachi 3, 6 is still right. I am the Lord, I change not. I found out that James chapter 1, verse 17 is still true. Not even a shadow of turning in God. In Hebrews 13, 8, our Jesus, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. People have changed. He hasn't, he hasn't quit in the healing business. People have quit trusting him and believing him. Now, I'm just about wound up. I'm just about started. I just about got my introduction closed, and it's 8.30, so it's time to close. So let's look at our verse here again one more time. First, first Timothy chapter chapter 4. Did you find Hebrews 13.8? Yes. I just want to know, does it still say that? Yes. It doesn't say anything other? No. It just says he's the same? Until, until June 28th, and today's the 29th of 2022, then he's going to change. He doesn't have to change. He's perfect in all of his ways. He doesn't have to grow like we do and increase like we do and develop like we do. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to mature like we do. 
He's perfect. Always has been, always will be. Who's up here? All right, so, so here we go. For bodily exercise profits a little. And, and it might profit some of us to have a little more of it. And no, no, nothing, wrong with, nothing wrong with these things in this life that are profitable to us, that are necessary for us. Bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable. Say it one more time. Godliness is profitable in all things, unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of the life which is to come. Lord, thank you. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 815 and 1030, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.